Cities like London are in a constant state of flux, changing their shape and form every day. However, these changes are rarely initiated directly by inhabitants of cities themselves, but by power brokers in the built environment like the state and private developers. Consultative approaches to planning and design aim to democratise this process by involving the community in the urban planning and architectural design process. These approaches can take numerous forms, including workshops, town hall meetings and feedback windows. Today, consultation has become a requirement in the UK planning law and an area of specialisation for socially orientated architecture and planning firms. But do consultative approaches really work? Have they been successful in redistributing power in the development of our built environment? Well, let's take a closer look. Highgate Newtown Community Centre is in the neighbourhood of Highgate. It began its life in the 1980s and since then HNCC has become an anchor for the community, hosting countless events and celebrations, while its services grew to include a youth support centre, woodworking shop and elderly care programmes. In 2013, Camden Council, the local governing body, enlisted the socially orientated architecture firm RCKA to develop potential proposals for the centre's renewal in close collaboration with the community. RCKA conducted dozens of workshops, town hall sessions, exhibitions and one-to-one -one meetings to involve the community in the process of rejuvenating their beloved centre. In 2017, RCKA and Camden unveiled their proposal for the new centre, a brand new complex of buildings that included new community centre facilities topped with 31 private residential units. This proposal, however, provoked frustration from many members of the Highgate community. Opponents claimed that the new buildings were too large for its low-rise residential setting and would be an obstruction to neighbouring houses. Additionally, none of the 31 private residential units qualified as affordable. So, given the plans for HNCC's redevelopment were drawn up as part of a comprehensive consultation process, what went wrong? One basic issue may have been poor planning and execution of consultation sessions. Another key problem may have been an existing lack of trust among the community in Camden and consultative development. Yeah, so day one we were very much aware mm -hmm. that there had been a history on the site yeah. even prior to our involvement. Mm -hmm. So there was a history on the site of um, architects coming in doing proposals mm -hmm. and they've always been floating okay. around. Similarly, it is near impossible to reach 100% consensus for development and the architects chose to take a democratic approach. And at each stage, we basically developed the scheme that was the one... We didn't have consensus from everyone mm -hmm. that potentially, you know, that was the best scheme to move forward with, but we had to take a democratic approach. Even if development may be in the interest of the majority, the media naturally picks up on controversy, amplifying opposing voices. This may explain the appearance of contention, when in fact the design has support from most of the community. Finally, and perhaps most fundamentally, architects, clients and the community may have different views on what qualifies as beneficial development. The community may not always consider what is in their long-term interests and are naturally sensitive to immediate changes in their neighbourhood. But who has the right to make this greater good decision? This is perhaps the most fundamental limitation of consultation. Power still lies at the top with the client. This may not always be a bad thing, such as in this case, where, if Camden's claims materialise, the new development will ensure the long-term survival of HNCC. What could have been done better in the redevelopment of HNCC? Well, for one, consultation sessions could have been designed far better, outside of working hours and well publicised within the Highgate community. Better communication from the architects to the community about the limitations of the brief may have also been beneficial. There's also the potential to bring consultation even further by letting the community choose the architects themselves. For example, Chelmsford City Council sets out consultation and engagement strategies which increase opportunities for communities to voice their needs and learn about the decision-making process. At a higher level, however, consultation is still only a mediator between community and power brokers. To be truly effective in democratising urban development, consultation needs to exist within a larger framework of accountability.